bless God. It's good to be in the house of God today. Yeah. Come on, amen. amen. And, uh, God bless. It's a wonderful thing that you and I are back in now. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I, I was watching the other day, and I don't pay too much attention to it, but this new virus that descended out. And, uh, but it just made me think back the last two years how devastated the nations were. Yeah. And how we are now. We thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Thank God for his protection. Amen. I know some of you did contact, contract the, a virus in the last few months, but it was in and out. Amen. 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 Nothing as de devastating as last year. So we've got lots to thank God for. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, and I, I, I thank God that what we went through encouraged us that God kept us safe. Amen. And I say those, me and Denise, I know you as well, but I'm not speaking for you. Yeah. We were kept safe. We stayed stood in faith. Amen. We believe God. We had the vaccines and uh, we stood in faith that God would protect us. And he did. Amen. Amen. And now I've got the faith to face whatever's coming out now. Hallelujah, Jesus. And, uh, and so, if you should have a thankful heart, Thank you, Lord. knowing that God is in control. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, and we often discuss it, and Denise will always say, yeah, but what does the word say? You know, we know what the media says, we know what the, uh, yeah, the politicians yeah. say, but what does Jesus yeah. say? Amen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because we can get away from that, yeah. because we, we want to be, we want to be, we want to be, we don't want to be silly, do we? So we tend to, or sometimes I think, we get too involved with the world's consciousness mm. about things. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I agree. And I've always said throughout the throughout the, the pandemic, you know, trust in God, have faith, but be sensible. Mm. And, and that's what most people did. So it, you know, thank God. For his mercy. Exactly. And we're we're looking at today. But no thanks to the media. No, that's okay, man. I don't take any notice of them. Yeah, no, you know, yeah, painful. The only news they give us is the bad news. Exactly, yeah. None of the positive. Yeah. We used to give a free newspaper out called the Good News. Yeah. It's a Christian uh, free paper. We used to push them through the doors. It had all kinds of stuff in and uh, testimonies healing, salvations, uh, general stuff as well. And people could, you know, because people are sick of bad news. Mm -hmm. You know, I often, when we walk into Tesco, you all the, the newspapers there, you see all the headlines, you know, and, and I just think, oh, hello, is that you? Hello. <laughs> it's all right. Is it, uh, who is it? Denise. Yeah. We should be phoning out this time. <laughs> Family. Hope in God. Hope in God, because he knows we're in church. Yeah. So, so do the kids. <laughs> <laughs> but did realise. Oh, well, um, I always remember Denise and Brother Dennis and uh, telling everyone to turn the phones off, the phones up on the screen. Huh? Yeah. I think he was doing a funeral. <laughs> Can you all turn your phones off, please? He's in the middle of it. <laughs> and it was Dennis. <laughs> I said, don't take your phone up there with you, Dennis. I hope I'll switch mine off now. I usually do. And then the kids can't get hold of me for days because I keep forgetting to switch it back on. Anyway, so I've waffled on enough. Let us look at. We're going to look at the message that we started last week and we'll finish it off today. And it's entitled, How to Boost Your Joy. We all need joy boosters, don't we? We all need something to encourage us. And, uh, you know, it's wonderful to see God moving in people's lives with Kath in, in a new apartment. I know it was a stressful thing. I hate moving myself. That's why we've done it 26 times. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but uh, the last time was the best because I had a heart attack and all the kids did it. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to have a heart attack every time we move. <laughs> anyway, so it's good to have to see you back and it's good to know that things are all on track. <laughs> and I know people.
Peter, I should have tested by him, but I know he's a bit shy. He's in his new job, he's doing well. Hallelujah. And he's it's amazing because I remember him coming, sat there, all shy, and uh, coming to, to England. And how God moved in his life and lived us through those years. Not finished yet. He's going to get his uh, passport and his visa, whatever. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen him with Anthony's family, the girls and his wife. Yeah. Amen. And um, we, we just rejoice with you. And uh, it's great to see that God's moving. And you know, the important thing is, we acknowledge your phone's been going, Denise. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? I have a vibration on my phone. Oh, oh. <laughs> Turn it off, Denise. Just one of those modern things. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. You know what? We've, we've got this new doorbell, and uh, it's one of those with a camera on. Yeah. It's marvellous. You know, you can be anywhere and answer your door. And, but the, the thing was, we didn't set it right, so it was set on motion. Every time someone went past, the car would burn. My phone was. <laughs> Said to her, we get down here and turn this motion off. Which she, she has done, it's good. And it's great because you can, you can be in Blackpool, you know, who's that? Oh, you do. <laughs> can you leave it in the blue bin, please? <laughs> anyway, we're, we're out to boost your joy. I want that in my life. Amen. You know, and when we talk about joy, we've been talking about the difference between the joy of the Lord and happiness. That we surround ourselves with, with things. And there's nothing wrong in having nice things, is there? I think, I don't think so. Uh, I think it's great if you've got time to have a nice holiday, nice car, nice home, yeah. and the things you want. It's a blessing, yeah. Because there's plenty of people in our world today that don't have that privilege. You know, and, uh, and I just thank God for it. But I don't depend on those things. Amen. It's good to have them. Oh, I've always said it's better. It's better to be miserable than rich than miserable than poor. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. How to boost your joy. So we're in Philippians chapter 2 again. We'll recap this and go bring it up to where we finished last week. And hopefully it's going to help you. I've really, I said to Denise yesterday or this morning, I've really enjoyed doing this series. I get so much out of it myself, yeah. and I hope you do as well. Yeah. And uh, don't just acknowledge it in here, but and then forget it when you get home, because that's no use. But if it really helps you, either write it down or go on YouTube during the weekend yeah. and catch up again. Yeah. You know, Christine does a, a wonderful job with that. Yeah. Yeah. Post a worship on testimonies yeah. and I'm the sermon. It's a lot of work, because I tried it once, and it took me two hours just to upload it and download You know, and I thought, oh, I'm going to be doing this every week. So we thank you, Christine, for that uh, dedication to that. Okay, we're going from verse 19. Say amen when you're there. Of uh, Philippians chapter 2. And he said, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. For I have no one like-minded who will sin sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. But you know his proven character, talking about Timothy, his proven character, that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Therefore I hope to send him at once, as soon as I see how it goes with me. But I trust in the Lord that I myself shall also come shortly. Verse 25, Yet I consider it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker, fellow soldier, but your messenger, and the one who ministered to my needs. Since he was, uh, excuse me, since he was longing for you all, and was distressed because you had heard that he was sick. For, for indeed he was sick almost to death. But God had mercy on him, 
and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I sent him the more eagerly, that when you see him again, you may rejoice, and I may be less sorrowful. Receive him, therefore, in the Lord, with all gladness, and hold such men in esteem, because for the work of Christ he came close to death, not regarding his life, to supply what was lacking in your service towards me. It's a wonderful piece of scripture, that. You know, and there's a lot more to, to discover in there than that I can teach on a Sunday. So over the last few weeks, we said we've learned that joy isn't the same as happiness. We yeah. just mentioned that. Yeah. Why is that? Because we learned that the world's happiness is tied to our circumstances. Yeah. And it's only when your circumstances change, you begin to find out really what it's all about. I always have that saying that it's, it's easy to have faith when the cupboards are full. But it's when the cupboards are empty and the money's not there or the job's not there that we've got to really start trusting God. Because it's, it's funny, isn't it? A lot, of, a lot of what we call the faith preaching, what I've listened to on and off since the 70s, it's all about prosperity, and I'm all for that. But what if you haven't got that? Because see, what happens, we begin to measure our faith by our possessions. People begin to think God's not blessing them, so he's not happy with them. And it's, this is where it's a wrong concept, and a lot of people get mixed up with it. So, if our happiness is tied to our circumstances, mm. how many know that joy of the Lord becomes elusive in our lives? Mm. Our lives become uncertain. I remember many years ago, I worked on the buses and uh, they started telling us they're going to make redundancies. The first time it's happened on the buses. And they told us they wanted 1,500 redundancies across the board. And I, I can tell you, each depot, especially the one I was at, we, everybody was concerned, worried about the house, worried about the children, worried about the holidays, worried, 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 worried. And I just said, I'm giving this to the Lord. Amen. Oh. I mean, I was naive enough to believe that, that God would provide. And I remember one driver saying to me, you know, what about you, Bill? I said, I don't have a problem if I don't work here, I'll work somewhere else. Oh, I knew you'd say that. I said, well, I trust in the Lord. He's my provider. And what I was actually saying is my happiness is not attached to my circumstances. Amen. Because my joy comes from the Lord. My joy comes from knowing that I'm saved. Hallelujah. I was talking to my sister last week when I went to see her, my youngest, one of my youngest sisters. And I was, t I was inadvertently giving her my testimony. We was talking about something else, something one of my other sisters has said. And I said, well, you know what, I, that my family, like your family, they know what you like behind doors. They know what you like at home. Yeah. And I said to her, I, you know what I was like. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember now. She don't remember that much because she was too young, but you know, and, and I began to tell her how the, the Lord had changed my life and Denise's life, you know, really changed us. It's hard for people to understand our testimony if they didn't know us before. If you only know each other from church or from, from your Christian um, life, that's all you know. But when you know someone who, before they got saved, before he was converted, and I always say it jokingly, but in truthfulness, you wouldn't want to be around me at that time. Because if he moved, I took it. <laughs> Oliver, Oliver uh, had nothing on what we were hanging around with. You ever seen the film Oliver? Yeah. yeah. 
When we had to stop doing what we were doing and start doing what God wanted us Amen. to do. Come on now. Amen. That's true. Amen. And guess what? It wasn't a burden. It was a, it was a joy. Was a joy. Yeah. I want to tell you how many times myself and, 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 and Denise and John and Johnny and Yvonne spent going trips to the tip with stuff that shouldn't be in our apartment, our flats. No one had told us that. We just know, wow, we, you know, we don't. We want to please God. We want Jesus. That's how I stopped smoking. I wanted to please Jesus. I said it's not right, and I never had one from that day to this. And I don't have no desire for them. They don't, you know. I've tried to give it up before I was a Christian. And how many know, you know, when you're trying to give up smoking, and you're a bus driver or a bus conductor, and everyone around you smoking, you know, you find yourself following them around the depot. <laughs> Then I'd have to go and buy some. Mm -hmm. But since the day I gave my life to Jesus, since the day, I remember it's a Wednesday night. The last cigarette I smoked was in the pew. Yeah. Can you believe that? I just looked, I said, that wasn't me, Lord. I smoked it. I'd gone an hour and a half in church without a cigarette, and I, I you know, and, and anyway, you know the story, I've told it many times. But thanks be to Jesus, that was the last one I ever smoked. If I wouldn't have done it that night and, and got a, a quiet word, I probably would never have given it up. I needed to give it up, it was controlling my life. Mm. Submitting myself to God, began to die to self. And then comes the joy. The joy of knowing Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Nothing mattered to me when I got saved. Nothing Amen. in the world mattered. Amen. And when I got baptised in the Holy Spirit, Jesus. it was like being born again again. Amen. And I used to do it with great joy. I've told you this before. Mm -hmm. I used to be driving the bus down the road. Guess what I would be doing? I used to be praying in tongues. Yeah. Loudly. <laughs> they all thought I was Polish. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what I was saying. Nobody ever said that to me. And I did our lunch. You know, oh, you're happy. Probably thought it sounded like any roots on You know, because I thought, well, I'm speaking in the spiritual. It's going to affect him in the spiritual. I love doing stuff like that. Especially when they don't know. <laughs> the joy of the Lord. Then comes joy. And we said that joy to, to adopt that joy and adapt that joy in our life, it has to be intentional. Amen. Amen. See, we depend on too many things, too many people. But it's your choice. Yeah. It's your responsibility yes. to find Christ, to find why would Denise talk about? It's your responsibility to find, meditate on the Word of God to change your circumstances. Be proactive, we said. Because if we don't, folks, I'm telling you this a million times, if we're not proactive in our Christian walk with God, we can lose it. Amen. Yeah. I thought it was once saved, I was saved. Of course it is. In Christ. Amen. But you can lose the joy, you can lose the, the, the you know the buzz of being a Christian. Yeah. You can lose it. And guess what? It can be stolen, your joy can be stolen from you. The devil's very crafty. He'll come up, he'll come to you in the guise of someone sat next to you or someone said something in church. If, if, if someone said to you someone in church and you're offended, someone in your street or in your job could say the same thing and it won't bother you. What does that tell you? Where it's coming from? 
Don't let the devil steal it from you. And so we, we, we read in, in, in Philippians that Paul sent Timothy, he sent Epaphroditus, mm -hmm. and he sent them, we said he sent them there for three reasons. And in verse 19 of chapter 2, he said, I'm sending them so you might be encouraged or cheered up. How many know we need cheering up? How many know many times you and I need encouraging? As Christians. <coughs> Paul said, I'm sending them so that they'll encourage you. And they'll be encouraged and I'll be encouraged. Verse 28, he says, so that they may rejoice and be glad. Verse 28, he said, I'm sending him so that I may be less sorrowful. Or one translation says, less anxiety. I'm sure we all are suffering with anxiety. Encourage yourself. Be around people that encourage you. Don't hang around. I don't do that. I don't hang around. I, I, I'm nice. I'm friendly. I try to be friendly to people. But there's certain um, groups in society I don't hang around with. Spoiled balls, yes. I don't, I don't enjoy that kind of thing. I know what I want. And I know what is good for our family. And, and you know... So I don't do those things. I try not to associate myself with that. It doesn't mean I don't mix. It just means I don't make that association all the time. I choose to do that. But I don't, don't get me wrong, I don't go around judging everybody. I quietly do it. I withdraw myself. My family know now. My job used to know. But, you know, they come out with the dirty jokes or the foul language. And I never used to say anything, but they'd say, oh, sorry, Bill. Don't say sorry to me. <laughs> I could tell you a lot more words than that that I grew up with. <laughs> but if you feel bad about it, say sorry to Jesus. Amen. Paul said, these will come and encourage you. They'll help you rejoice and be glad. And, you know, you'll feel less anxiety. Anxiety is a terrible thing. Have you ever suffered from anxiety? Yeah. I don't mean a constant one, but you might be worried about the bills or more worried about the kids. It's an anxiety. Mm. But if you continue to live with that, mm. it has diverse effects on your organs, on your body. It really does. The muscles in your stomach get tall, yeah. yeah. But it, it, it's more than that, Mark. It's more. It's, it's a very subtle. Mm. Because you, like I said last week, we begin to believe it's normal. Mm. Jesus. I always thought working nights is normal for me. I'm used to it. And Denise used to say, but your body's not used to it. It's not normal for you to be awake all night and sleeping during the day. Yeah. And I said, of course it is. I'm a, I'm a night worker. It's not natural somehow, yeah. But what it does, it causes anxiety on your body, or on, on your emotions. See, but whatever these two guys, Timothy and Epaphroditus, were doing, however they were living, Paul said he's going to make himself and the Philippians more joyful. Less anxious. That's what I want. Yeah. I want more joy and less anxious. And isn't it funny? When you learn to do something, it's like you might go to bed worried. And we always think, well, have a good sleep, and when you wake up, you'll be better. Well, sometimes it's still there, isn't it? But your attitude has changed. And that's what we try and do is change our attitude towards it. Okay, we've got a bill, or we've got something coming that we can't change. Yeah. How can we deal with it? How can we 
reduce the anxiety. And it's a wonderful feeling when it kind of bothers you. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's not about burying your head in the sand. And, you know, I knew one girl who used to get all the all the bills and couldn't afford to pay them. She didn't even open them, put them in the drawer. And let's go along and say, look, you know, you could have, you know, they'll come knocking on your door. You'll notice the, the lights will go off, your gas will go off. You can't, you can't just push them in the drawer. You can't for a short period of time. Yeah. But learn how to deal with it. Learn how to deal with the issues of life. We said number one booster for our life was to... Uh, Shift the focus away from myself. We said that often it helps if you're feeling down, you're feeling lonely, go out and encourage somebody. Yeah. Go and text someone for a cup of tea or invite them in. Mm. It takes your mind off yourself, doesn't it? Yeah. It takes you, the focus away from yourself. True. Yeah, it helps you, yeah. Helps you mental health. Listen to what Paul said here in verse 20 and 21. He said, For I have no one like minded who will sincerely care for your sake. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. And we asked last week, I asked you again, can you name, you don't have to shout it out or tell him, but can you name those people that you know in your life that are looking out for you? Probably very few. That are looking out for your interests. Because people are very selfish, aren't they? And it may, I don't know about you, but it makes me very cautious about people. Especially people I don't know. I remember the other day I told you about this guy at Tesco's in Farmworth. I got out of the car and he come driving up. Excuse me, I, you know, do you speak Italian? <laughs> Obviously, you speak English. <laughs> I said, why, what can I help you? Well, he said, you know, and he started, oh, yeah, I knew, but I'm listening, trying to be polite. Denise is walking off, you know, shopping time. Well, was he Italian? Yes, he was. Oh, and, 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 and his story was, I've, I've hired this car out. I've got to go back today. I'm going back to Italy. I've got the bill here for it. I've paid for it, but, you know, anyway, he told me this at the end of show me all these watches. <laughs> you can have, you can have. I can't take them back with me. The tax on them is too much, so I give them away. You have a wife? Another one, eh? What about your family? Here's another one. And here, I put them in a the bag here, and you take the bag, and I've got all of the bag. And he's in his, he never got out of his car. You know, and... Uh, it was like an Italian Del Boy. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking to an English Del Boy. The woman always said, you can't kid a kid up. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just waiting. I said, what's... What's the catch? No, no catch, no catch, no catch. All I'm asking, he said, how much do you think it would cost? to fill this tank up. Because yeah. you have to, it's a hire car, you've got to take it back with a full tank. Yeah. He said 30, 50, 50 pounds? I said, probably. You give me 50 pounds to fill this up, you can have the watches. I said, you can have the watches. <laughs> yeah. See, he, he was all, he, he was out for his own self-interest. He wasn't caring about me. Yeah. Did it, did, you know. Did I need, he didn't ask me to do a need a watch, but it looks okay, the watches. Yeah. It's a bit like those when you're in Tenerife, yeah. the African school. Exactly, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Watches and sunglasses. And I remember seeing them in the beef. Trying yeah. to sell us this cheap watch for 18 euros. Mm. Denise got him down to eight. <laughs> <laughs> she bought it. It's obviously the rookie, isn't it? Yeah. And it stopped working before we come. <laughs> and we got to Tesco, so this, 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 this is a similar watch to what he was selling us for 18 years. Bring that thing. They're all looking out for themselves. And most, that's human nature, they look out for your own interests. 
rather than those of others. <coughs> See, if you recall last week, Paul mentioned two things, two important things about Timothy. Number one, he was unique. He said to the Christians, he said, for Timothy, he was saying to you, he said in verse 20, he said, I have no one like-minded. In other words, he says, he's unselfish. And unselfish people, friends, are very rare. Because it's always what's in it for me. So he said that Timothy was unique. And secondly, he said that Timothy is sincere. Once again in verse 20 of our text, he says, He will sincerely care for your sake. People know when you're just trying to find them in. It's like we said, it's like children, isn't it? They know. They know who you are. The unsaved know you're just trying to get them in church. But when they can see that you sincerely care for them, that you'll go that extra mile. That's why we do the things we do in churches. The community groups, the food banks, the food shop, all those things, you know, but we go, oh, that's not spiritual, you know, of course it is, we're caring for their needs, exactly, yeah. caring for their state, exactly, yeah. and we all need food, that's why we have food banks for people who are struggling, and they know, if you're showing this superficial care, they know it's fake, they know it's shallow, yeah. they know it's non-genuine, yeah, and it's like, like me and Alan work so many people don't we work where they say, well, why well, not believe in food banks, yeah. Should be an app to you. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. See, but Paul's talking about the matter of focus. And like he's about Timothy, we need to change our focus, don't we? Take it away from ourselves and on other people. If you, I don't know if you've ever come to the Monday group or the other groups, but we go there on a Monday and we see the dedication of the volunteers, you know, and we see how it functions and they're caring for other people, there's people coming in and they care enough for them to see how they're doing and, you know, genuinely. And it's marvellous to see that we're giving of ourselves our time, our effort. We say our time, our treasure. Because it costs us to come to be a part of it. But it's something we have to learn, isn't it? We have to learn to take the focus of ourselves and put it onto other people. Now it's easier said than done. Because our culture and our lifestyle and everything in our nature teaches us to be self-centered. Remember we said that's why Nike say their their motto is just do it. <laughs> and we kind of interpret that whatever pleases you do it. One man said he went into to a Burger King, a burger bar, and he said, have it your way. Whatever way you want it, have it your way. They were feeding on people's self-centeredness. Mm, endorsing the problem. Because it's all about me, me, me. I, I, I. And of course, there's something in it for them. It's endorsing their problems, their merchandise. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. First Corinthians 10, 24 said, Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. That's wonderful, isn't it? We said, it's not talking about letting people walk all over us. Sometimes we have to do that to show the love of Christ. But not always. No. I mean, don't get into it, people, but walk away from it. Don't lower yourself to their uh, 
Joy booster number two there, very quickly. Become someone people trust. Mm. Are you trustworthy? Are people safe coming to you? Paul said, you know, Timothy's proven character that as a son of his father, he served with me in the gospel. Amen. We said, Timothy is the real deal. Timothy is authentic. Timothy is genuine. Timothy is trustworthy. It seems hard to say it's hard to find in the church today. It shouldn't be hard to find. We should all be living it to the best of our ability. Yeah. Paul was saying to the Philippines, Timothy, you can come to him. He's trustworthy. He's not going to talk behind your back. He's not going to share what you've shared with him in confidence. Why? He said, because he's been proven. He's been discipled. He's been tested. He's been verified. He's been checked. We said that, you know, at the end of it, it's credible. And our family and friends and work colleagues, they're doing a credit check on us all the time. You call yourself a Christian? I remember saying to someone, oh, it's funny, you, you don't believe in God, but you know exactly how a Christian should live. Mm. Mm, yeah. They're doing a credit check for us. They're being presumptuous as well, yeah. Paul was saying to Timothy about Timothy, he's credible. Can we say the same thing about ourselves? Have we been proven? Have we submitted ourselves to a, a disciple, to be a disciple? Are you trustworthy? That's why Paul wrote it to Timothy, 1 Timothy 3, 6. He said that we don't put a novice in ministry. No. Because they'll be puffed up with pride thinking it was them. I've seen that. I've seen it loads of times. It's sad to say I've seen it a lot with musicians and ministry leaders. Who think that they, it's because of them they got that position, because of their, their um, character. I've seen it happen many times for young ministers. Getting um, above themselves too quickly. So let me ask you, are we the real deal? That's been fun. Or are we the phony baloney? Come on. Are we the ones just wearing the masks? Just pretending? Oh no, I'm the real deal. <laughs> are you and I developing a reputation for reliability? Jesus. Well, some people are, but not as many as we need. We often say, especially when we do practical things, even spiritual things, as practical things are part of the spiritual thing. But it's the same view, isn't it? It's the same four to five or six that will give us the time and effort. And that's okay, because you're answerable not to us. See, we've got to live with integrity. I like this from the message translation, Proverbs 25, 13. Reliable friends who do what they say are like cool drinks in sweltering heat. Refreshing. Mm -hmm. Now you need to, have you been in that situation where it's so hot? So, you know, you're just gasping for the drink. You get a nice glass of water or whatever it is you're drinking that's ice cold. It's so refreshing and it's so good. Amen. It does you so good. See, are we like that cool drink? Can people count on you? Can people count on me? Are, are we flip-flopping? Proverbs 25, 19 says, 
Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like chewing, or like a bad tooth and a foot out of a joint. Or it's, another translation says it's like chewing with a bad tooth. Have you ever chewed with a bad tooth? I said it, you know, it happens at Christmas to me a lot. But the chew is, you know, them, them, them uh, caramel pennies, quality street. <laughs> Cost me a fortune that Christmas. <laughs> Phil is putting. Oh, with a, a sprained foot or a sore foot, I've had that since January. It's almost better now. But you can't do anything. You can't walk, can't go out, can't rest. You know, you're waking up with pain. Stability for you and I is dependability. Number three, Booster, learn how to work well with others. This is a this is a good one for the church family. Learn how to work well with others. I mean, I've seen some things are disaster because people don't work with people. They've got bad attitudes. Give them a bit of responsibility. I'm the boss. Have you ever been there? I'm the boss now. <coughs> and it ruins everything. Amen. Learn to be a team player. This is so important in church life. Don't become that long wolf. Learn how to cooperate. Paul said there in verse 25, Yet yeah, I consider it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker, and fellow soldier, but your messenger and the one who ministered to my needs. Mm. And Paul's talking, he's in prison here, he's waiting, he's waiting on the death sentence. And he said, He's come to minister to me, and learn to cooperate with him. Hallelujah, Jesus. It was more than just a servant. It was Paul said, he's a co-worker. Mm. <coughs> he said he's a brother, a fellow worker, a fellow soldier. Learn to work together. Mm. Yes. Secondly, he said, be considerate. Verse 26, yet I considered it necessary to send you Epaphroditus, since he was longing for you all and was distressed because you had heard that he was sick. He didn't want them to know. He didn't want their sympathy. He wanted to be their servant. <laughs> Tremendous character. <sighs> First Corinthians 1 10 says, you must learn to get along with each other. You must learn to be considerate of one another, cultivating a life in common. If you don't cultivate it, we said at the beginning, you're going to lose it. Or you could lose it. Be considerate in our lives. Not, you know, it's not all about what was it said. It's nice to be to, to be liked. It's nice for people to take that interest. But the Bible said, if you want friends, you've got to show yourself friendly. Amen. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Don't be sad. You know, no one can get near you. No one loves me in this church. The times I've heard about that throughout my, my Christian life. There's no love in this church. Come on. We know there is. Yeah. Sometimes it gets a bit afraid. We know that. That's families. Yeah. But on the whole, there's love in this church. But it cuts both ways. It certainly does. One man said it takes intelligence, character, and humility to be considerate. Amen. To stop and think about how our words might affect another person. 
Not just what they say about you, but what you say about them. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 says, verse 10, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labour. But if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Very quickly, joy booster number four, I'll try and bring this to a close. And I like this one. Live for something that's worth dying for. Um, the Christian life. There's a song that goes, He died for me, I'll live for him. Yes. Mm. Come on. It's been said that often we can give big time commitment to small time causes that aren't going to last. Mm. One man, he's talked about one man who struggled to climb up the ladder of success in his life. He said only to find out when he got to the top, it was the wrong wall. Mm. <laughs> we waste so much time, don't we? So much time on things that are not that important, really. And he probably damaged his family and his marriage, trying to get to the top for success, only to find out it wasn't worth it. The best of our life is to invest in that which will outlast our life. Paul, verse 7 says, For indeed, he was almost sick unto death because of the work for, for the work for Christ. He came close to death. He, he risked everything. 27, I think he was. So. But Paphroditus didn't consider his own life. He didn't want them to know he was sick because he didn't want to distract them. He didn't want the focus to be on him. One other translation of that says, he risked his life for the work. Amen. And that word risk, it, it, it literally means hazarded. Or he gambled. Epaphroditus was said to be a godly gambler. He gave, gambled his life for Christ. And even though he was sick and almost died, He didn't stop or turn back. Amen. But what was it? He was persistent. Oh yeah, I went to church this Sunday. Oh, I gave. But do it persistently. Yeah. Make a difference. Complete the mission. Finish what he started. This is what I love. We've been here four years over now. Four years. It seems like every month or every year we're investing in something. Amen. You know, yeah. and, and you've all contributed to that, whether it's through your tithes or through your offerings, through your pledges. We've seen things done that we, we couldn't afford to get done. Yeah. But God made a way. Yes, and, and He used us. We stuck with it, we stuck with the plan, we stuck with the mission, we stuck with the vision. Yes. I was thinking when Denise was testifying about a double vision, and she's saying now it's single again. And I'm, you know, in my head, I'm like, yeah, you've got 2020 vision now. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we should have 2020 vision. Amen. See, what risks are you and I taking for the gospel? 
It does cost, doesn't it? It costs being a Christian. Not always in monetary things, but it costs us time and effort, energy, commitment. See, we've got so used to it being handed to us in society. We want it and we want it now. We can't wait. I can't wait. I want it now. This started in the 70s, you know, with what we call easy credit. Can't afford it? No problem. Buy now, pay later. <laughs> and once you took the took the bait, they've got you on that opening. Like with a mortgage, you're there for your life. They don't want you to pay that mortgage off. They don't want you to pay that store card off. They want you to keep getting stuff on it. They want you, and they, you know, because that's their income. Be persistent in what God's called us. What, you know, what commitment, let me ask you, what commitment have you and I started that we haven't finished? Mm. Is our commitment to Christ deep enough to cause us to sacrifice? Jesus. Yeah. It does cause a sacrifice to do the things that God's called us to do. It's not always convenient, is it, to be on the outreach? It's not always convenient to come and help at church. It's not always convenient let someone else do it. Are we deep enough in Christ to cause us to sacrifice? I'm going to close there now because it's fast approaching 12 o'clock. See, what risks? Can you ask yourself this? What risks have I taken for the gospel? We said last week, I'll finish with this. I dare you to ask, I dare you to pray, Lord, use me. I dare you. I dare you to pray, Lord, use me. Sincerely, Lord, use me. In whatever capacity you're available or you're gifted in, Lord, use me. Because I believe true and lasting joy, folks, comes from service. Service before security. Mm. <coughs> See, sometimes things that God calls us to, I mean, He stretches us. Mm. He stretches our faith. He wants us to reach further. Mark 8 35 says in the New Living Translation Only those who give away their lives for my sake. For the sake of the gospel, or the sake of the good news, will ever know what it means to really live. I'm going to say that again because I stumbled there. Only those who give away their lives for my sake and for the sake of the good news will ever know what it means to really live. Amen. Folks, are we just existing? Because that's what we're doing it, until we actually have a purpose greater than ourselves. To get out of bed for in the morning. Amen. Once we have a purpose greater than ourselves, yes. it changes our whole perspective on life. Yeah. Mm. True. See to live for, something to die for. Mm. He died for me, I'll live for him. Whatever yeah. yeah. cost. Yeah. Yeah. I have decided. To follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back. No, that's what I've experienced. Ah, I don't want to go away from God. I don't want to backslide. I can't do that. I don't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It was real for me. I gave my life to Christ. It transformed me. It changed me. It did all the things that I'm telling you it's going to do. Amen. If we apply it. Yeah. Amen. 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 I want to boost your job. Amen. 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 Amen.